Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Miss Tavy Plus Size, or you can call me Miss Tavy Baby, and I also go by Octavia or Tay. So I just decided that I wanted to talk about my experience as uh, trying to become a plus size model in North Carolina. You would think that it would be a success because there's so many plus size models in North Carolina, but that's really not the case. And before I start about, you know, before I start, you know, this whole thing, I'm not trying to slander anybody. I'm not here to dog anybody. That is never my MO. I would never do that. I'm just going to talk about my experience and how I felt and how mentally it, you know, broke me. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I started modeling in 2017. Um, it was this wonderful lady that I met. God rest her soul. She is no longer on earth with us. Um, met her on Facebook. You know, she was trying to get a modeling group together. And I decided to, you know, take my first step and try it. Um, let me just say that some of these modeling groups, before you go and join a modeling group, make sure you do your homework. Make sure you do your research. Make sure you are prepared for the stuff that comes along with it. Um, I never really had any beef with her, per se. I just didn't like the fact that uh, she never promoted me. You know, we would take pictures, you know, and uh, she just never promoted me. She never really uh, hyped me up. I guess if you would call it. And number two, my whole thing with modeling groups is if you're going to be in a modeling group, then it should be some type of advancement that should be, work, you know, should be happening. Like if you're in a group, y'all should be able to come together, promote each other. If I see that there's some work out here and I can't get to it, hey, somebody need a model or, you know, stuff like that. That's what I thought when I first started this whole thing that I was going to get involved with some people and I was going to advance and we were going to all, you know, become this great, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but it didn't, never, it never worked out like that. So I think I stayed connected to her for about six months, her in the modeling group. It was a couple of girls in the modeling group that I did not get along with. And I don't know why, but it's, whatever you know it could have been me it could have been them whatever um and also let me just say before I started modeling in 2017 I had already thought I was a model before that like I didn't need nobody to tell me that I used to pose and take pictures and I have this walk that I love to do because it's like a natural walk and so everybody's like what well, she thinks she on a runway every time every time because I'm a big girl so you're gonna see me so I'm make sure I give you a show every time. That's just my MO. But with this first modeling group, I thought that it was going to be something that it really wasn't. And so I had to remove myself from the group because I was not benefiting anything from it. Um, and like I said, before y'all start joining in group, to anybody who's trying to become a model, it's work out here for everybody. It is work out here for everybody. The way that the world is right now, everybody needs somebody to model something for them, right? So when you get ready to step into that scene of trying to become a model um, in the plus size world, make sure you do your research. Make sure you figure out who you should work with from who you shouldn't work with, who you should um, collab with as far as like photographers and other models. Because not everybody has your best interest at heart. Some people just want you on as a link or a connection so they can say this, that, and the third. With that being said, I let that group go. And then I kind of branched out on my own and just started doing my own thing. I am going to say, being out on my own, I apply so much pressure on myself I pushed myself hard. I took, I made sure to, you know, get my 
my photos in, get my poses in, get my walk in. I was, I'm not a runway model. Let me just say that. I, I haven't done runway and I don't judge anybody that do runway. That's them. I can't do it because I can't walk in heels like that. I'm clumsy. <laughs> I am clumsy. So I cannot walk in heels like that. And I probably could if I actually took my time and practice, but I, I, I have this natural walk and it doesn't look right in heels. <laughs> Anyways, um, so being out on my own as a model, plus size model, I was able to get in quite a few magazines. Um, people wanted me to model some of their stuff. I was able to model some people's, you know, items. Um, but then like this other modeling group came along and I thought that if I got with that group, because it was all females, it was a sisterhood. I was like, oh, this should be dope. It was not dope. It was actually horrible. And when I say horrible, I mean, it was horrible in a sense for me because I could never get connected to them. We never linked up. Um, and I lived in one city and mostly all of them stayed in another city or they were close to each other. So they could link up with each other and take photos and group photos and, you know, Things like that, but I could never get connected to anybody. Like they never came out to where I lived at. I never really had the time to go out where they lived at because I was constantly working. And if I wasn't working, I had kids. Look, at that time they couldn't stay home by themselves. And I don't really have no family up here where I live at. So it wasn't like I could find a babysitter. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> with that, I, I stayed with that group for a minute. That was also another group that never really celebrated or recognized me or anything like they didn't celebrate they didn't um promote me they didn't buy my clothes when i had my boutique none of that so i just decided that it was time for me to step away from that group and there's no beef with nobody on there it just i could i didn't feel like i was advancing i didn't feel like moves were being made. I, I didn't see any improvement in my modeling career with that group. So once I did that, I ended up being able to, you know, go back and branch out on my own, get connected with some photographers, got my pictures, a couple more pictures and, you know, some magazines. And I also got put on a billboard. That was cool, right? Did that on my own. That was all on my own. <laughs> like I was out on my own when I did that. Um, honestly, when I think of being connected to a modeling group, I think of how we are supposed to or what... Here's what I think it should look like. We you know, promote each other. If I can't get to this, you know, this gig, I got a sister that stays up here that can get to this gig, or I got a modeling sister that can do that, you know, promote her stuff. Try to, you know, help her out. I just don't know why I thought that being in a modeling group would help me advance. I never advanced while I was connected to any modeling group. The last modeling group that I was connected to, <laughs> I don't know why I connected myself to it. And something told me not to, but I did anyways, thinking that it was going to be good. And it wasn't like these people didn't give two craps about me, my, what I was doing or nothing. Right. <laughs> I could never see myself connecting to people without actually caring about, you know, what they got going on mentally. Because mentally, with this last modeling group that I was with, I was mentally going through some things. And I couldn't count on nobody. And I don't know why I thought I could. And I don't know why I thought that being in a modeling group, you know, you should be able to call on somebody when you, you know, going through it or need some encouragement. But it was the same, the same thing. It was the same thing. I had to remove myself because they didn't care. No one reached out. No one asked anything. 
They assumed. And when they assumed, it just made things worse. <laughs> I tried to put on some modeling shows. I tried to do a prom and all kinds of stuff. And nobody would support it. So when I say my experience was horrible with modeling groups. My experience was kind of traumatic. Like I literally had mental breakdowns dealing with other groups, modeling groups. And I, I, I didn't think it was supposed to be that way. And the problem is with me is I'm always supportive. I'm always trying to promote someone and support them and, and encourage. And I could not get the same thing back. Now, maybe from one of the female modeling, the sisterhood, I, I, yeah, they did try sometimes. They, you know, would reach out and some people would be like, hey, you know, how you doing? And it will only be after I've, you know, spazzed out on social media, which that was annoying <laughs> for me because I was, I annoyed myself with that one. But when I say you have to make sure that you do your research, do your research, understand who you're dealing with, look and see what it would do to, um, what would it do for you, right? <clears throat> and what I mean by that is when you connect to someone, see how, like if you're connecting to this group, see how that will, how you will benefit from it because everybody's going to have to benefit from something. You know what I'm saying? You're not just going in this group just to be in the group just to say you're a part of a group, you're being a part of a modeling group just so you can see how, what kind of work, what kind of gigs, how will this advance my modeling career, right? One thing that one told me that I hope that someone tells y'all, and if they don't, I'm telling you, always keep you a modeling bag with the necessities in it. Tank tops, some tights, leggings, pair of heels, and the extra change of clothes just in case because you never know you know, when it comes down to modeling and being a part of something, always keep your modeling bag packed. That's something I had to learn along the way. Um, another thing I had to learn was how to do my own makeup. Um, there's nothing against uh, makeup artists because makeup artists are the bomb diggity. Like these girls are out here doing it and guys too. They are out here doing their thug dizzle when it comes down to makeup. But sometimes you can't afford it because let's be honest, some of these gigs, you don't get paid for. Some of these fashion shows, you don't get paid for. Right. So if you ain't got the money and you just spent your last on an outfit or you just spent your last on gas getting to the gig, you got to do your own makeup. <laughs> so always make sure that you, you know, keep you some makeup around in your modeling bag. YouTube tutorials because in Instagram these these ladies are showing you how to do makeup. Um, that's just something I had to learn over the years. Another thing I had to learn over the years is all plus size models they're not supportive of other plus size models. You would think that in this modeling, I mean in this career that uh, all plus size women would stick together, but that's not the case. <laughs> That's really not the case. Not at all. <laughs> not the case at all. Um, a lot of them pretend to be supportive and be, you know, uh, sisterhood this and sisterhood that. But they have their selective views. That's the other thing I had to learn, too, with the modeling group is these people have their favorites. Most people have their favorites. They'll only support this one. They'll promote this one. They'll only take pictures with this one. You know, they'll only talk to this one. They had their favorites. And at some point, you can't even be mad at that. But like, if we're all in this together, then, <laughs> you know, but that's a part of life, I guess. In North Carolina, it's really hard um, because people are not supportive of each other in North Carolina. And you low-key have to be popular in order for people to support you. And the other thing I've noticed is plus other plus size women like to down talk each other. We're all in the same community. 
We all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to get paid. We're all trying to get noticed as a model. We're all trying to get paid as a model. And some people feel just because they got a few little gigs that they can look down their nose at you. <laughs> I'm better than her because I get paid for certain gigs. <laughs> but it was a time you wasn't getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Um, I, I just a lot that I, I noticed over the years. And that's... <laughs> it kind of turned me off from modeling or being a part of a group because why why are we all like this we're not all of us because i'm not like that i literally be trying to support each other like each other models promote and show off their stuff and their brand and some of them just be like mm, i'm too good to model your stuff or i'm too good to promote your stuff or i'm too good to tell somebody that hey i can't do it but i know somebody i know a model that could i don't know a model that will so <laughs> I said all that to say, just be mindful when you get ready to join modeling groups. A lot of people want you because the spotlight is on you at that moment. And they figure that if they can get you attached to their modeling group, then the spotlight would be on them and their group. Be careful of that because I know some people like that. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with modeling. There's some great things. There's some great things and some great, you know, people to meet. Really, there are. But I think you have to branch out because I don't really know too many famous models that came from North Carolina. And if they did, they probably moved to another city or another state. Yeah. So, to any of my plus size ladies out here that's looking to become a plus size model, Again, be mindful. There are some positive groups out here. There are some women out here that are great modeling groups. They, they great. I just won't join anymore. I, I can't. After the three that I was in, I was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere. And I did better on my own than I did with groups. So just make sure you do your research. Keep your expectations low. You know, and always make sure you push yourself and promote yourself more than anybody else. That's the one thing I had to learn. Like I said, I was too busy trying to promote everybody else. You know, show off everybody else. Oh, this is my model sister, this, that, and the third. Uh, uh, uh. Them motherfuckers wouldn't promote me. They didn't give a fuck about me. <laughs> so, imagine how that works. I will be back with more. And, you know, I want to talk about more, you know, different modeling things or aspects. Like, being a plus-size model is not as easy as you think it is. And being a model, period, is not as easy. It's not all. It's not just standing in front of a camera taking pictures. There's a lot with it. I had to learn that the hard way, too. But I'll be talking about that in my next, you know, my next YouTube video that I drop. So, thank you for watching this if you have any questions or would you like for me to talk about something, please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.